Well, howdy friends, Brian Flash, the commander of Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools. We are here in the deep rolling hills of Old Virginia. And we're musky fishing with a great friend of ours, the man himself, the game changer himself, Mr. Blaine Chocolate. Should be right behind me getting the boat ready. And uh, not every day that you get to fish with a industry leader or a game changer like Blaine, so we're really excited. We can't wait to share this with you. We've got a lot of good stuff coming, so uh, follow along and let's go chase musky. couldn't be more excited to be out on the water with Blaine. I could not be more excited. As we were heading down the river, Blaine filled me in on the muskie. Mostly what its subtle bite feels like and what to expect from this apex predator. You would think as large as muskies are, the bite would be ferocious. Yeah. 90% of the time, it's gonna feel like it's going through a brush pile or it's gonna it's hit, you might have felt a little tick like you you tap the branch or something mm -hmm. and then it feels lighter and that's the fish that just sucked it in and it's coming at you so I always tell people that I'm taking don't think that you're gonna feel this hard just uh, you know somebody hit you in the arm it's not gonna feel that way it's gonna feel very soft and when you feel that it's very important to not lift it's very important to strip long and fast until you start feeling weight and when you feel weight don't stop you keep pulling and stripping. Don't use the rod at all. Matter of fact, I've started fishing my clients where the rod stays in the water yeah. and you just strip. Straight line right at the fish until you can't strip anymore. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, strip the fish through the guides. And I've actually had a few clients <laughs> that would strip the fish right to the rod tip. Wow. <laughs> um, but what happens though is muskies are really fast and they coil up like a snake and they launch themselves at the target. And that momentum might carry him 10, 20 feet towards you. Good Lord. So you don't feel it. And uh, so what happens is you have to recover all that before they spit the fly yeah. and, and then get a hard set. And the problem is these fish have such a large mouth, such a bony mouth, that using the rod at all, we always say don't trout set, but it, this is probably the largest exception of that. Because if you use the rod, I've lost so many fish. I always tell everybody I've, I've done it all wrong. Yeah. And that's how I've learned how to catch muskies because I know what they don't like. And once I got that out of the way, I started catching fish. Um, well, you know, Flip has always taught me the same thing, is to keep that rod absolutely low. Keep the bend in the butt of the rod if you're using the rod. Right. Absolutely keep in. And, and we talk about <laughs> we talk about never bringing that rod between 10 and 2. Right. This zone up here when you're fighting a fish, there's no reason to bring the rod into that zone when you're fighting a fish, especially a big game fish like this. Correct. Yep. Well, I've certainly made all of those mistakes myself. Yep. I will probably make those mistakes today, <laughs> tomorrow, over the next couple of days. I got yelled at uh, three weeks ago by Travis Huckabee for trout setting on redfish. Oh, it happened. And that's something that I consider myself to be pretty good at. So, uh, it, it happens. You also you mentioned keeping the rod tip in the water. That's one thing that we always stress, uh, especially in saltwater angling. Uh, in fact, I was fishing with uh, Kelly in the Bahamas not too long ago, and uh, Kelly and I were talking about how important it is to have that rod tip in the water. Mm -hmm. Rod tip an inch or two under the water when you're retrieving, stripping, hook setting, uh, as close to the surface of the water we can, and you just confirm that that's the case here with these these fish as well. Yeah, it reduces slack. Slack is our enemy, it no matter what you're doing, yeah. casting, S especially stripping. Yep. yep. And when you're stripping for 
a spooky fish such as a bonefish, having that rod tip that far off the water, every time you strip that line goes up and comes and slaps down on the water. You put the rod tip in the water, there's no uh, vertical movement. Correct. Yep. That's also a real important tip on cast. Uh, yes. I mean, I tell people all the time, start your rod tip at the water, you, you, you reduce all that that slack that's created by having the rod high. The, however, however high the rod is when you start your cast, that's that much slack you got to get out of it. When I was about um, when I was about 27 years old, I stood in a field with Lefty, and I was just kind of starting my career. And I said, Lefty, when I'm teaching when I'm teaching people how to fly cast, what's the number one mistake that that I'm gonna see? And he said, Brian. He said, every single person you ever teach will want to start with their rod tip here. Mm -hmm. And he said, mark my word, he said, every single person you work with will want to start here. And that was the best piece of advice I ever got in my career about, about teaching fly casting. Start with the rod tip. We, you know, in our, in our lessons, we, we, uh, we talk about if you're practicing in a field, put your rod tip on the ground to start. If you're here on the water, put your rod tip an inch or two under the water to start the cast. That is probably the single most important thing, if you ask me, and that was taught to me by left. Yeah, I always use golf as an analogy. If your back swings off, it's hard to compensate them and bring it back on the forward swing. Yeah. So you've got to have your, your back cast is probably the most important part because it sets you up for everything else. Yeah. We spent plenty of time presenting a variety of game changer flies to these finicky muskies. It took a lot of patience and perseverance. The conditions were making it difficult to see, but Blaine promised fish were here and to not give up. Muskie fishing sucks. <laughs> go big or go home, and I'm not ready to go home. I'm just, I'm just getting my musky legs under me. As we neared the end of the day, my arm grew tired. My back was aching. Throwing these large game changers is a challenge in its own right. I sent out one final cast. Just like Blaine had told me, it felt like I'd snagged a leaf. You got him, good fish too. It's a real good, nice one. That's a giant, that's a giant. Right over my head, right over my head. Oh. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you. Good job, dude. <sighs> well, on a game changer. Yep. On the new game changer rod with the game changer himself. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. It was a giant muskie. And not only that, my personal best by a long shot. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.